Now that you're familiar with some of the procedures in evaluating the double integral and polar coordinates, let's just look through a common example. Example that, you know, to just keep going to know, you know, how are we going to find the double integral. So what is our problem? Our problem is that we want to evaluate sine theta over the region R, where R is the region in the first quadrant that is outside the circle, R equals to 2, and inside the cardioid, R equals to 2 multiplied by 1 plus cosine theta. All right. So uh, a fairly standard double integral problem in terms of polar, polar coordinates. Now, at this point, if you're able to bring out your graphic calculator and you know, graph things out, you should be able to fall to the solution fairly easily. And you know, I do suggest as a method of learning that one should you know, graph out all these polar regions because we've always been sticking to the rectangular plane. Sorry, rectangular coordinate system. But I'd just like, uh, I'd like to tell you that you know, I'm going to try to approach these problems in a few ways. Uh, see how we're going to solve it in a graphical method and also an algebraic method, which is good, you know, something that we should learn because if we are stuck in the middle of a jungle without our TI-89, you know, we better, you know, get our pen and paper ready. All right, so uh, we will graph it out. So I'm able to graph out the, the function, okay, r equals to 2 and the cardioid r equals to 2 times 1 plus cosine theta. And this is what I have. So this is the cardioid, as you can see. The name origin, I believe, is the shape of a heart. That is what my high school teacher used to tell me, and it does look like the shape of a heart. And the circle is r equals to 2, so it's this one over here. Now, proper sketching methods of uh, sketching polar graphs, I will not go into them. So what does this tell us? Well, region R is um, outside the circle, okay? And it's inside the cardioid, and it's in the first quadrant. This is important. This is quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what we have is that our area R is something like that we have over here. Okay, so if we're able to graph it out in the polar coordinate system, then it's fine. Let's just graph it out, and we want to find the double integral of sine theta. Now, um, as you might know, the sine theta can, or sorry, the function can be expressed in terms of r and theta. In this case, you know, it's very easy for us. We just got it in theta, so that, that's fine. So basically, if one may want to envision it, the, the three-dimensional surface is um, this region r sticking out, and the sine theta surface is over here, but let's just leave that for now. So I'm um, going through the proper uh, procedure, so we, the double integral, uh, double integral of sine theta dA. Okay, so what is going to be our limits? Well, let's handle the inner integral first. What was the step that I told you? Well, shoot out a ray from the origin, okay, that goes across the region R. So let's just say it goes over here. Okay, and as we can see, it's a simple region because um, there is no common point where R is equal to R, okay, that's within the boundaries. Yes, R is equal to R over here, but if we say within the boundaries, um, there are distinct points. Uh, simple language is that they don't intersect because they don't. So we are able to, you know, apply the normal rules. Um, the ray will intersect at the innermost point, which is this one right here, right? That's R equals to 2. So that will form our lower limit, okay? Our lower limit. And then it will intersect again at the outermost point. Uh, which is r uh, equals to 2 times 1 plus cosine theta. So that would be our um, upper limit. So, um, so the function is the same, sine theta, all right? And remember, the dA would also change to r dr d theta, okay? So, and then what is our um, limits in terms of theta? Well, that is just basically the ray sweeping from the positive x axis in a counterclockwise fashion. So, you know, this is equals to theta equals to zero, and this is theta equals to pi divided by two, right? So it's uh, zero here and pi divided by two. Right, so that is all there is to it. Look at the graph, region R, you know, shoot out the ray, innermost point, outermost point, that would be in terms of uh, R, or we're gonna integrate that, the inner integral with respect to R, and then the, the angle in which it sweeps. So I always think, you know, shoot the ray first, and then calculate the angle, so zero and pi divided by two, such as this one over here. Now draw careful attention, or please pay careful attention to this small little R right here. And a lot of students miss that out, okay, remember, um, dA, the differential quantity, is going to be r dr d theta. I believe I derived that in the previous lesson if you want to know how this comes about. But don't miss out the r, okay? The students miss out that. They just put sine theta dr d theta. There's always the r. Be very, very mindful of that. So now we just go through our standard integrating processes. And this is uh, pi uh, divided by 2. And then what we have is that we're going to integrate that with respect to theta, uh, r first. Right, holding the theta constant or holding theta fixed. So sine theta stays as it is. We got sine theta and then we got half and r raised to the power of 2. This would be evaluated for r equals to 2 and r equals to 2 times 1 plus cosine theta. I wrote the limits as r equals to r equals to because you know, um, as, as we, you know, we are still kind of beginners in this stage, I just want to let you know that we substitute the limits where r is. Just like how we substitute the limits uh, in terms of x where y is. 
And then after that, we will integrate that with respect to theta. That is fine. So, okay, so what can I do now? Well, there's half here, so I can bring out the half outside. And then I notice there's a 2, there's a 2. So when I multiply there, I get 4. 4 divided by 2 equals to 2. So I can bring the 2 outside. I will integrate uh, from 0 to pi divided by 2. Uh, put this one inside here into where r is, right? So it's r squared. So what the first one I have is 1 plus cosine theta squared sine theta. And then I'll take away, um, take away sine theta. Okay. Now, um, at this point, uh, we seem like to have a rather complicated expression, but that's not to worry. Why do I say that? Because if I were to differentiate this, I would get minus sine theta, and I got a sine theta over there. So this is as easy as it is. It's easier than it looks, okay? Um, remember, it's just the chain rule of differentiation. Differentiation. Differentiate this, we get uh, minus sine theta. So if I compensate with minus sine, I should be fine. And that is done by over here like that. 1 plus cosine theta squared. Uh, sorry, cube plus cosine theta, okay? And this would give us from 0 to pi divided by 2, and it's equals to 8 divided by 3. This is our final answer, the double integral of sine theta. Um, yeah, just differentiate this, you see, you realize that you get this, right? It's just recognizing that the function inside that, when we differentiate that, we get uh, minus sine theta, so we can compensate for minus sine. So this is all well and fine, you know, if we know what the uh, polar graph looks like. However, what about we take it from another perspective? Let's just say we can't graph out polar coordinates, but we can graph out rectangular coordinates. Well, what I did here was that I graphed out r equals to 2 plus 1 uh, plus cosine theta. R, yeah, this is the cardioid and uh, r equals to 2. This is the um, graph, uh, sorry, the circle. But how we must think here is this is, means the radius. Okay, so this is not the polar form. This is basically graphing the same functions in terms of a rectangular coordinates where I vary theta and I get a certain value of r. But what does the problem tell me? The problem tells me that uh, the region, the first quadrant that is outside the circle I equals to and inside the cardioid. So first things first, is region in the first quadrant. What do I know about regions in the first quadrant? Well, basically it's from theta to pi divided by 2. If I were to translate that inside this uh, rectangular coordinate system, that would mean theta Sorry, uh, from 0 to pi divided by 2. So I'm focusing on this area right here. Oh, sorry, this um, limits right here. Okay, so that handles the first quadrant. That's done. Okay, um, outside the circle. So what I mean by outside the circle? Well, outside the circle, it means that it needs to be greater than r equals to 2. Don't be deceived that why do I say it's a circle but it's a straight line? Because remember, this is the radius. For a circle, the radius is always constant. That's why it's a straight line. It's always constant. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's outside the circle. So that means the region needs to be uh, higher than um, the r equals to 2, which is basically the region up here, and it's inside the cardioid. So well, I'm concerned with this region over here. So that's just another way to do it. Graph on rectangular coordinates, kind of map, you know, knowing that this is radius, so I know that I need to be outside the circle, I need to be higher than r equals to 2, like such as here. But I need to be inside the cardioid, so I need to be less than r equals to 2 times 1 plus cosine theta inside here. And that is the region that I have. So once you get that, you know, you can just put in the limits as per usual. But if you want an algebraic solution, that should be quite easy. And I'll do it very quickly, okay, because I'm running out of time. Alright, we see here that a certain point in the region R has a certain radius from the origin. Okay, it must have a certain radius from the origin. And let's just call it radius R. So we are seeking a purely algebraic solution to really find the limits. Right. But what do we know about this radius R? Well, we know that this radius R is greater than R circle. It's definitely greater than the radius of the circle because it's lying outside the circle and it's less than the radius of the cardioid. Okay, I hope you can see that because it's lying inside the cardioid. So whatever radius that we pick inside R, it needs to be greater than R circle and less than R cardioid. So if we were just, just substitute the values in, okay, we would get something like this. But what can I say about this? Well, if this is more than this and it's less than this, this has to definitely be, uh, R circle has to be definitely less than um, R cardioid, which is written like so. Okay, and then if we divide 2, we get 1, subtract 1. What we have is cosine theta is um, greater than 0. Okay, so far so good. But we are still losing one piece of information which we have not used. And that information is lying in the first quadrant. Now this would give us, okay, if you know your cosine theta graph, it is not that, it's another graph altogether. Uh, theta lies between minus pi divided by 2 and pi divided by 2. So you would make a vital mistake if you were to just put this uh, endpoints inside here, thinking that this is minus pi divided by 2, because after all, this is the solution that we have.
coming from this inequality. However, this constitutes the points from here all the way to here. Okay, we are not interested in that. Region R is lying in the first quadrant, and that is why we can say that theta is defined from zero to pi divided by two, and that is why this limit is over here, zero pi divided by two. This, my friends, is a purely algebraic solution. If we do not have, you know, the utilities to graph things out, and at times in mathematics we need to visualize by ourselves. If we can't visualize, we seek an algebraic solution. This is how one would do it in terms of a simple problem of the double integral. Okay, in terms of polar coordinates, of course. Okay, thanks a lot.